Today in the joy of editing, I want to get creative using the Nick Collection 7 and the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Thanks for joining me again today. Today, I want to get a little creative with this stock image of some deer. I like this image, but today I thought, I want to give this a nice creative ethereal look and to do that i'm pulling out the nick collection i'll be using nick color effects along with nick analog effects and we'll start out with analog effects and then we'll also incorporate the tk9 plugin for photoshop because it pairs up nicely with the nick collection by the way if you'd like to purchase any of the dxo software including the nick collection i have affiliate links for you in the description below this video and i also have have a 15% off promo code for you, and that is Dave Kelly. So you can use my promo code Dave Kelly and save 15% off any software that you purchase from DXO. When you use my affiliate link, I make a small commission, and this helps support my channel. So I really appreciate it when you use my link. All right, then let's get started. I'm going to come up to the Photoshop menu and click on File and come down to Automate, and you're going to find Nick Collection 7 Pellet there. Click on that, and your Nick Collection 7 Pellet comes up and we can launch all the different Nick collection software from this pellet. I'm going to start out with Nick 7 analog effects. It's a great piece of software and I don't think a lot of people really use it. Let me know if you use it and like it. Leave me a comment in the comment section below, but let's check it out. We're going to click on Nick 7 analog effects. Well, here we are inside of Nick Analog Effects. And you'll note right here, we have Camera Kit. And basically, it's all the different filter effects. And if you click on Cameras, you're going to get a bunch of different presets and so on. Sometimes I use those, but I'm going to click on Camera Kit and just use the filters I would like. And I want to start out with this one right here, Bokeh. So I'm going to click the plus and we add the bokeh filter. Now you see we have this circle here. We can change the size of this circle. We can come to the edge here. We can rotate the circle. We can adjust where the sweet spot is. In other words, where the focus area is. I'm going to click right here and drag this down and then click on the center circle and pull this down to around here. And I think something like that should be pretty good. Now you could come out to the edge and drag this uh in here. This is how the blur graduates off. You can change that if you want to, but I think something like that should be pretty good. And so this area right in here is the area without blur. And then from this point out, it starts to transition off, but we can change the shape and the size. Like I could click right here and drag this out. You see how I make the entire oval area wider. So we have full adjustment here. You can come down here and angle this if you want to, or you could come here and pull this in a little bit like that so you have a lot of flexibility here this is really great now let's come over to the interface here for bokeh now of course you could shut the bokeh off by unchecking this click on it there's before here's after we have two different bokeh styles we have the ellipse which i'm using and then we have tilt shift which is really nice for like that miniature type effect really cool but for this one i want the ellipse and then we have this blur strength slider so we can increase the amount of blur to the right or decrease it to the left but i want mine right at 30 percent now we can boost any highlight areas and the filter defaults at 100 percent. so i'm going to drag this to the left see how the highlights dull down a little bit but i I like those highlights way up there. So I'm dragging this up to 100%. And sometimes we can see some aperture shapes showing through the really highlighted areas. And we could come and change those shapes right here if we want to. But I'm just going to leave mine with a circle. But this is a really cool filter. There's a lot you can do. But that's what I want right there. I'll uncheck bokeh. This is before and this is after. But already I'm getting a more dreamy look on this image. I want to apply one more filter in analog effects. I'm not really keen on the color of this image. So so what I want to do is we're going to come over and see where it says film type. Let's click the plus. And now we have these different film types. Now there's a drop down here. If you click, we have warm, cool, subtle, 
black and white neutral. I'm going to click on that because I think this will look good as a black and white neutral. Now we have all these different looks we can click on. So I'm going to click on the first one and I like this. Here's the second one. Here is the third one. And I like this and I like the black and white treatment on this image. Now we can adjust the fade, you know, give it that faded look by dragging this to the right. I'll double click this to reset it and we can adjust the strength of the fade. We can also add some grain to the image. You know, a lot of black and white images, a little bit of grain can really look good and more natural. I just have a little bit of grain here and we can adjust the hardness of the grain, but that's really all I want to do here. By the way, if you felt you would ever need to come back and readjust this, it's a good idea to come down to the lower right side of the interface and click right here, convert to smart object. This way you can come back and readjust. All your filters will be here and you can make changes. Now, if I left click with my mouse on compare, we started out here. I'll release my click and now we're here and I really like it. We're done here in analog effects, but we're not done. I'm going to go ahead and click apply and this will send us back into Photoshop. And here we are back in Photoshop. Now I'm going to incorporate TK9. So what I want to do is come up to the multi mask panel. I'll click this button to get a color grading tool. I'm going to click on the midtone button and I just want to tint the midtones a little sepia. So I'm going to click right here and just add a little bit of a sepia tint. And now we're going to click on the highlight button and let's add a little bit of sepia to the highlight. So I'm going to click maybe right about here. Maybe that's too strong. I'll click right here, back that off. I think that looks good. Let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here's after. Just a nice little sepia tint to the image. Next up, color effects. I'm going to come to my Nick Collection 7 palette and click on Nick 7 color effects. We'll launch color effects. In color effects, I just want to use one filter, one of my favorites. So we're going to come over to the left side of the interface and look for Glamour Glow. It's right here. I'll click the plus and we get this nice glowing effect. I don't want to forget. I'm going to come down to the bottom right hand side of the interface and check on convert to smart objects. So we could come back and readjust if we need to. Now we have various sliders that we can work with. This is the glow the glowing effect. I'm going to drag this slider to the right over to somewhere right about here just to give it some more glow. Now we have saturation. I think I want a little bit more saturation here. So I'm going to drag this to the right and I think I'll take it to like right about here should be good. And we could add more warmth if we want to or cool it down if we take this glow warm slider to the left to cool to the right to warm. But I'm going to leave it there and we can adjust shadows and highlights if we want to. Now I really only want this glow and the highlights I want the highlights to glow, but I'll take care of that in Photoshop with the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. I'll uncheck Glamour Glow. This is before and this is after, but now we're getting a more dreamy ethereal effect and I like it. Now, all I need to do is click apply and that'll send us back to Photoshop. And here we are back in Photoshop. Now, as I said, I only want this glow in the highlights. So what we're going to do is come up to the multi mask panel. Right now, my color grading tool is in the way. I'm going to click this X just to get it out of the way. And then click this button right here. We can go into Edit Blend Diff. Now here, we can decide where we want this glow to be. I could click this one right here and just put the glow in the shadows. I could click any of these midtone buttons like Midtones 3, just put it into the midtones. But in my case, I'm going to click the one just to apply it to the highlights. Now let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here is after. So now we got that nice glow going only into the highlights. If I uncheck gray, this is what it looks like without blend if. And if I check it back on, it looks like this with blend if. And it's only going to the highlights. And I really like this dreamy effect I'm getting. Now I just have one final thing to do. And I just want to put a nice color vignette around the edges here. Now if your TK actions aren't open, click a TK button on the Combo 6 panel, hold your shift key down and click on vignette. A color picker comes up and you could choose a color. I want a warm color and I believe this is the color I use, but you can click and drag around and get any color you want. We'll start here. We can change this later. I'm going to click OK. A Gaussian blur dialog comes up and I just click OK. And I could shut this layer off. Here's before and here is after. And I think I have the right color here. If you don't, you can double click on this icon and then you can move this around and try some different colors here. But I think this color like right about here should do the trick and I'll click OK. Now I think the effect's too strong so I'm going to take the opacity. The default setting for vignette is 30%. I'm going to take it back to 20%. Let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here's after. But see that nice color vignette around there? I may take it back a little bit more. I'm going to click right here and let's drag it back to 
Let's try 15%. Let me shut off this layer. Here's before and here's after. Yeah, just that nice little warm touch around the edges, I think looks really good. On the combo panel, if I click this button here, you'll also find it on the CX panel. We can see we started here and now we end up here. And I really like the way this edit turned out. Now, just to recap, I'm gonna shut off all of these layers. We started out, we sent the image into analog effects. I'm gonna turn this layer on. We added some blur, converted it to black and white. And then we added some color grading with the color grading tool from TK9. And then we sent the image into color effects and added a nice glow to the image. And then we used Blend Diff just to target the highlights. And lastly, we added a vignette, a color vignette that is. So there you go. So that combination of adding a blur to the image and then adding some glamour glow really helped in giving this image this dreamy effect. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial working with the Nick Collection 7 along with the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.